line. And basically, um, you, I, I then tasked you with doing a quite a bit of not rewriting so much as um, adding more story, more of Mary to it, more of what really would matter to the reader. Because one of the things that I'm passionate about is storytelling. Mm -hmm. And you, Mary, you have so many <laughs> stories. We couldn't even tell them all in this book because they, we would have this big, long, massive <laughs> if you told all your stories. Um, and so basically, I was just there to be the developmental editor, make sure you were using um, the right words that were going to uh, make the, keep the reader engaged, make sure you were telling the story, make sure that you had a cohesive end of one chapter, beginning of another. So mm -hmm. that what was taking the reader from this chapter to, because we're talking nonfiction here. So right. you cannot, in fiction, you could start a new chapter in a whole different place in a whole different timeline or whatever, and bring the reader back in different ways. But in nonfiction, we have to keep the reader engaged. So, um, and then of course, Tom worked with you on the cover and the interior page design. A lot of people forget that there is actually a design to the interior part of a book. Right. And um, we talked a lot about marketing and, and uh, we made a book trailer. Mm -hmm. Mary, the book trailer was so great. You contributed. Yeah. People need to understand that, that um, Mary's in... Rhode Island and I'm in Binghamton. So she sent us the content for the book trailer and Tom put it all together into a really great uh, video message. Yvonne, so, you wanna explain to Carolyn and everybody else who's gonna see this and hear this, what a book trailer is? Well, a book trailer is just like a movie trailer. Um, and you can create them during the writing of the book and give give a little teaser, um, one minute uh, uh, videos out. Uh, what most people have at the end when they're ready to launch the book, they do a two to three minute video, which is both about the book and its message, a little bit about the author and who the author is. And it often includes some feedback from the readers. So of course there was a cadre of readers who helped read the book before it went to its final publication right. to give feedback and insight. And so the book trailer could have comments and testimonials from them. And it's just like a movie trailer. I mean, a movie trailer is designed to entice you to go see the movie and a book trailer is designed to entice you to read the book. Right. Yeah. And that was, it was interesting putting it together, Carolyn, because um, I had some material from some interviews that I had done, you know, I was running around like crazy trying to get on radio and on TV and I hired a publicist who had his hands in all of this stuff getting newspaper interviews and all of that kind of stuff and so from the um, TV and radio interviews I had material that I could send them to work into some of the still shots that they created and added on their own. And then um, they, they put in some of the reviews that I had before the book got published. So we sent it out for some reviews and we had comments. So we had these very nice reviews that were worked into the book trailer. And then Tom was kind enough to create and narrate the whole thing. So he created the narration and he did the narration for me. So, and it was about a minute and a half, which is just about enough. It just gives you that kind of like you're left sort of on the edge of a cliff because it's, it's just so fast paced, you know, it goes by so quickly. You think, oh, is that all there is to it? And it, I mean, the way I saw it, if I had seen that on another book, I would have wanted to buy that book because yes. it gave so much content, but it flashed by so fast, it left me wanting more. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's what it's designed for. It's, it's uh, the, the whole purpose 
is to give the viewer. I mean, Mary, I was just doing um, a show earlier with a videographer who does book trailers. Mm -hmm. And we talked extensively about the fact that, that um, authors like yourself, writers who are writing books can actually do a photo shoot, let's say, right. with a videographer of two or three hours. And she can take and divide that up into two to three minute segments. And now you have a whole year's worth of content about you, about your book and about your business. And, how, and that's, a, that's what a book trailer is meant to be, a little snippet to tell the reader a little something about. You could have a half a dozen of them. And mm -hmm. certainly for your book, Mary, there could be a dozen more because yeah. there's so many little snippets we could take right out of the book. And one thing I wanted to add along those lines, although it did not get recorded, is last night we have a local Rhode Island Authors Association. It's called Association of Rhode Island Authors. And um, I attended, there were only a handful of people there and they had two authors that were doing longer readings, maybe 20 minutes, they read different parts of their book and they talked about the background of the book and that kind of thing. And then they had an open mic so anybody could go up and read their books. Of course, I was the first one to raise my hand and I read the introduction, which was really interesting because it really did give an overview mm -hmm. of, the, yep. of the story. And I didn't know how, how much time I actually had. He said five minutes. So I gave a little bit of an introduction, talked about my background, and then I read like the first page and a half of the introduction. Mm -hmm. And I got the biggest, I got a bigger round of applause than the people that had actually been asked to present. And I heard one of the authors who was a doctor, a medical doctor say to the person who was running the show last night, she, you've got to get her to read, meaning I need to be one of the 20 minute guests. So I said, hey, I'm up for it any time. But there, that just goes to show that you can repurpose your material in so many different ways. And I'm all for repurposing. Yeah, because and that's why, that's why you made the field guide to go with the book. Right. Because right. we know, Mary, when... Um, an author is writing a business book and it's, it's part of their business and they want to speak and they want to teach and have workshops. The book is a perfect and absolutely perfect foundation for that. Right. And um, Carolyn, just so you know, when I was doing my launch, I hired these two digital marketing folks you know, to create Facebook posts for me. And one of them said, well, you got to write a workbook. I'm like, what are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm done. I'm not writing anything else. And she said, no, that's going to be your free download. Huh? And I wrote it and I sent it to them and they put it together in a PDF form, just black and white, nothing really fancy, no forward or anything. I think maybe she created a table of contents and we put that on my website with a landing page so that people could sign up and download the free workbook and also buy the book from Amazon. So we did that at the launch date and we could do the exact same thing with the field guide. So one of the things I am thinking about, just FYI, Carolyn, is that um, when I'm recovered from this entire process, it was probably gonna take me like the rest of the summer <laughs> I'm going to do another launch of the field guide and do the same thing where they can order it right from Amazon on a landing page and maybe get my ebook for free or something, you know, the, the book version of, right. I don't, I, I, well, anyway, the book version of what's behind me as, right. a, as a free ebook because Amazon allows you to change the price you know, it'll say, do you want to do a special deal? And you say, yes. And then it says, pick your price. So you could actually give it away for free if you wanted, but I'm not going to give this big book, which I slaved over for eight months away <laughs> for free, but I could give the ebook away for free for anybody who buys the field guide. So I'm thinking about that already, but the, the book 
writing and launching process is it's a completely different process from coaching and getting coaching business, although they go hand in hand. The work involved in writing the book and launching the book are equal. It's um, like starting a new business, isn't it's it? It's like starting all over again with writing the book. And when I got to that part, I hired people to help me. And I, I just could not, I was out of gas. I was completely out of gas. So I hired a publicist and these, and I hired a copywriter and these two digital marketing gals. And, and Mary, it, it wasn't it, free. I can tell you that, but I got great results. So, well, and that's the whole point. If you're going to do something and the purpose is no one writes a book to have it sit on the shelf. Um, you know, people I have had prospects or people who want to write books come to me and say, well, I, I really don't care if anybody buys it. I just want to write it. And, you know, I just look them in the eye and say, you're a big fat liar because yeah. you certainly do care. And certainly if you don't care this moment, when you get into chapter four of the book, you're going to care a whole lot. And, right. and it's because of the amount of work and energy and effort um and just it's it really wore you out mary <laughs> and we I had that, i mean think of it mary we had the content we were just repurposing it and making sure it flowed in the into a book format right. whereas a lot of people are starting from scratch right right and so therefore even with all those pages of content and yeah. and three or four years of graduate education and graduate papers it still took me eight months of really hard work to put it together and i i strongly i did a little video clip on this i strongly suggest that people that want to write a book start off with some content that they've already created mm -hmm. do you That's have true. anything like that carolyn well I have a master's. I have a PhD in uh, my oh, PhD you got lots in of papers. <laughs> organizational management. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I've done that. I do, you know. Um, so yeah. But my question is, Mary, has it helped your coaching business? Have you gotten clients because of your your book and that effort? Not or yet. is that not your desire anymore? So. No, well, I'm telling you, it's it's a hard choice. It really is because it's just so much work to keep the book top of mind with people. And if you look at a lot of my posts, especially especially on LinkedIn, they're all about the book. Mm -hmm. So I think once I recover from this entire process and I get the field guide kind of launched because I haven't uh, formally launched it yet. It's out there, but I haven't, you know, made any big blast about it or big specials on it. Um, then I'm going to start using that field guide as a basis for a course and a way to get coaching clients. I think that they go hand in hand and the, the field guide is the practical steps to to be successful at what's in the book. And that's the basis of my business because I'm an executive coach. I work with leadership. I work with people that come from big corporations that have responsibility. So, I so think let me ask you, uh, is the field guide different from the workbook or is that the same? It's the same thing. Okay. I just okay. called it a field guide. Okay, I, got it. I use Jack Welch's idea because he's got something... He has a couple of books out and then he's got the GE field guide. Okay. So being that I was a GE employee for a couple of years, I got it. I took that. One of the ways that, that um, authors can use their books to get new clients, whether it's coaching or, or anything else, is to um, use the book as an entry to speaking and presenting. Right, especially on a national. Now that COVID is is letting us, we're getting opened up a little bit more. 
the opportunity to speak in front of groups, networking groups and conferences and places like that. And that's where you're going to get more clients. And the book will be in because the event planner wants someone who is going to deliver. And anyone who's written a book, if they see that you've written a book, they immediately put you at the front of the, the line. It's interesting that you say that because I had signed up for the Webex conference. Carolyn, are you familiar with the Webex? The Webex, World... yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and um, I signed up for a couple of free sessions, but I only had time to really look at one. And I got an email. No, I got a message on the Webex uh, website, but I couldn't find it. So I connected with the woman who sent me the email and she was the speaker coordination coordinator rather. And she wanted to know whether I had coaching credentials and what were they ACC, PCC or MCC. So I connected with her on LinkedIn and told her that I was a PCC and I've been coaching for seven years and I wrote this book. So I don't know, she has not responded to me yet. She's probably looking for an answer from me on Webex, but I, I had no clue where those messages end up and it, it wasn't intuitive. So maybe next time I'll be asked to give one of the workshops there. It goes on for like eight or nine months. It's, it's periodic right. throughout the year. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I can connect with her, but I think Yvonne is correct. When you have a book, you have so much more social credibility, you know, public presence. And and Mary, you've put a lot of effort into, as you said, said, sharing on LinkedIn and having a publicist and putting the effort forward to show that you're serious about this message that you're putting out there. And it's, it's not just, I wrote a book and now look at me, I'm, I'm this wonderful <laughs> person. That's not um, how it is. And in the professional authors I work with do the same thing. They, they want to speak and via speaking, they want to then either fill a coaching program or um, meet with people that they can. Right. So, right. And if I were in a, a forum, uh, like a conference or something where I was asked to be a speaker, I would speak about my book and do some readings, but I would have a piece of paper on every seat that said, you know, I'd I'd love to stay in touch. Can I have your name, phone number, your birthday, so I can send you a card and your email address, and I'll put you on my newsletter list. And then I take that bunch of papers, which I always did before pandemic hit, and then I would call each one of those people and talk to them about coaching because right. they already agreed. They heard me talk once and they already agreed to allow me to connect with them. So yep. I usually try to do LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, send them a newsletter and then make a phone call. So they're not, I'm not just saying, hey, you want to coach with me? <laughs> Hi, you have three extra right. thousand dollars hanging around. So, yeah, I think it's a good catapult into public speaking. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, Yvonne, you want to talk a little bit more about your process? Well, my process is that I'm looking um, really, really for smart, talented women like you, Mary, and um, a couple others that I'm working with right now. And I, I... I only take four to five, maybe six clients at a time. Um, I'm not a big, big company. I don't pass anybody off to anyone else. It's me. You get me. We, um, we do a phone call every other week or, or more if it's necessary. I take all the content and edit it and make my comments, my suggestions. Then we talk about them. I mean, you don't have to accept my suggestions for everything it's it's a conversation that we have that if i if i've been reading the um book as i obviously as i edit it and we've already discussed the through line so what is the message that has to go from beginning to end and i find that it's that it's missing 
if I'm confused about something, or sometimes, as in your case, Mary, there were times when I would write back and say, this is a really great story, but I bet there's more that you could tell us. I bet you can put more Mary into the story. And that's what the reader wants. Mm -hmm. So then you would add more of the story from your perspective. So the reader feels that they're getting some, an expert telling them the leader you don't want to be. Um, so that's what I do. And then of course, Tom works with the author on the cover design, and that's not something that he just kind of invents on his own, right, Mary? He asks right. the author's input. He wants to look at other covers that, that the author has chosen from other authors that they like. And then there's the internal page layout, what kind of font. We can make recommendations. Are there going to be call-outs? Are there going to be graphs? Are there going to be charts? Right. I mean, some people who want to put little images in, are they going to be black and white or color? It's it's easier today using print-on-demand to do color, but it's still more expensive than yeah. black and white. Um, and then, of course, we make sure that the author gets their book up on Kindle. And um, after that, if the author wants us to do further work, like build a, a book trailer or the workbook that you're doing, uh, we created for you, Mary, we're more than happy to do that because when for Mary, I mean, you especially, the, the other, there's one other author I'm working with that might be good for a workbook, but the two others are not. If, if you're looking at this endeavor, um, we talked about speaking, we talked about how it gets you in front of people, we talked, you talked about how to gather the information from them, um, giving something away for free, like maybe a PDF of the workbook for free or something always is a way to get people in, in, engaged. But um, if, if the author's looking at this book to enhance their business, and that's the purpose that I want. I want to work with people who are looking to enhance their business, grow their business by showing their expertise in a book. And um, let me just say that if you're reading online that print is dead and nobody reads books anymore, that's a great big fat lie because it's not true. It is true that people won't read a book of 300 pages. Yeah, that I found really interesting. Um, I, I had a lot more to write, but Yvonne cut me off and she said, if you go over 300 pages, forget about it. So I'm at 272 pages. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, the, the front matter, so the front matter, we consider the introduction, the front matter in any preface or anything like that would be front matter. And that, that almost doesn't count because that is just for the reader to orient themselves if they choose. Not everybody even reads the front matter. Mm -hmm. So we look at the, the rest of the book and yes, I mean, honestly, generally speaking, people don't read past the middle of the book. But when you have a book and a workbook and there's going to be workshops, webinars or others that, other things attached, now suddenly the book becomes something that people will because they're going to participate in right. this work that you're doing, they will see the value of the entire book. And sometimes people pick and choose what chapters they want to read. I mean, honestly, I, the, some of my favorite, like the Rasputin chapter, I love that chapter. The one about down the memory hole, um, when you talked about the women in chapter two. But um, for a professional, and that's again what, what I'm looking to work with, and I, I am looking for women. The reason I'm looking more for women than men is because women are underserved mm -hmm. in the world of business in Absolutely. Books and training. If you yeah. go to Amazon, if you look, Mary, if you look um, the last hundred years, okay, if we'll go to the last hundred years and make a list of the top 100 books that were written and, and were popular and people bought, only two of them are written by women. So more women, in my estimation, need to write books to help other women succeed. Because right. if I'm starting a new business, and I don't know if you've seen the news lately, the news is you know, all over the news is talking about how women suffered so much more in during the, the pandemic. pandemic. Yep. Right. So what a lot of what are a lot of them doing? Starting their own business. Mm -hmm. And guess what? 
they want advice from other women because women have unique responsibilities and challenges that they're not going to get from a book written by a man. So absolutely. My soapbox. Woohoo. I, I have a question about uh, doing workshops, which I'm wondering if, <clears throat> if you have thought about and can offer some suggestions. If I'm considering doing a workshop based on the book and the field guide, do I provide those to them and wrap it into the price or do I ask them to go buy their own book? You wrap it into the price. Wrap it into the price and then I get the books at my author price and then I yes. send them to my yes. people that are gonna be, okay. You All right. absolutely wrap Good. it into the price. And if I'm buying them at the author price, it's um, it's not killing me to buy them at my author price. The two books together are about $7. Right. So, and the other thing is you can, if you're doing workshops, webinars, so it's online, not in person, you're not handing out. So they can get the physical um, book wrapped in. And for the field guide, it could be the PDF. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so wrapping, thinking about pricing from that perspective, if you're doing it in person, which I, I expect you will be doing not mm -hmm. too long in the future, then you can have the actual physical books there and wrapping it into the price. I mean, make sure everybody knows you're not only getting Mary, you're getting Mary's book and the workbook. And, and this is the value because we're talking about I don't know, Mary, I don't know what you're thinking of, um, of charging for these workshops. W what numbers were you thinking? Because then I'll give you the numbers I'm thinking. I have no idea right now. I think with the books, it would be more than without the books. Sure. Um, normally, so I can't get people to participate for more than $25. <laughs> Um, well, you know, maybe um, 197 is the least that you should be charging. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It should be between 147 and 197 for yes. a full day workshop yes. in a hotel with Well, no, no, this is this is webinar. If oh, webinar. If this you're doing this in person, it's more like 497. Okay. Includes book and lunch. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. So did you hear any of that, Carolyn, about the pricing of a workshop? Oh, she's got her cleaning people there. So <laughs> she's got to get away from the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> A really big thing I, that people are afraid of, and you know, Mary, the people, uh, is pricing. This whole pricing yeah. thing. Yeah. What do we price my book? Now they're not afraid. Let me tell you, they're not afraid in books. They'll come to me with their book, and they'll say, "I want to charge twenty nine ninety five. and I'll be like, "No, you're not charging twenty nine. Nobody's going to buy this book for twenty nine ninety five. But when it comes to the actual expertise that you're bringing plus you're giving them this book and this workbook and you're giving them lunch um that absolutely i mean start at 497 and a year from now you'll be charging 1297 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that's very inspiring because i was trying to wrap my mind around how i was going to combine actually like you said carolyn getting business and wrapping it into my book and charging for it, charging a price that made sense mm -hmm. that I could actually get people to attend and to uh, pay for because- uh, I did miss the, the pricing. Was it, uh, did you say 197 for an hour? No, it was, well, I was in my head, I'm thinking a full day. Oh. So what are you thinking, Yvonne? 497 in person for a full day, but full day online, what would that be? What that, do you it would be like 297. I think 197 is half a day, Mary. Okay. Um, I, I think that the other the other way that you make this work is especially online, but even in person, 
you you give them the actual book. Oh, no, I've got my my Mary books right here, and this is what they get for free, and they get lunch, but they have to download the workbook as a PDF. So now you don't have to to give that to them. And if they want to buy the actual physical copy, sure, absolutely. Here's the link. Go buy it. But or I could bring some with me. Yep. Yep, sell them in the back of the room, that kind of thing. Um, but that's the selling in the back of the room happens also when you do um, speaking. In person Absolutely. speaking, yeah. In person speaking, yeah. You, you bring your author copies and you sell it at a big discount or whatever. And right. Like, oh my God. Or you, or you give it away. It depends on what the speaking gig is. Right. I was actually thinking the uh, what I've seen authors do at some of these other events that I've attended is they sell the book for $20 because it's easy to run $20 through Square and it's most people have a $20 bill on them somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's just, here's my $20 and out they go. And maybe the back of the book says twenty four ninety nine or thirty four or something or other, but you're getting it for twenty or twenty dollars because you attended this event, which you paid to get into. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, some of these women's events are like fifty dollars just to get into the door. Yeah, and once again, people love that they get to take something that you gave them something for free, and I, I promise you that even if they don't read the entire book. They will read some of the book and either they will want to work with you or they might know someone who wants to work with you. And that book will become part of something they keep. It's right. not like a business card that gets lost in lost. their pocket or right. pushed off the desk into the garbage or anything else. Well, one other thing that I noticed uh, last night at this author's meeting was I asked one of the authors for her business card and her business card was a bookmark. Yeah. And I thought that was so clever because I have bookmarks and they, they have my information on them, but I didn't think of bringing those bookmarks with me. And I've got like a hundred bookmarks sitting here. Wow, bookmarks are great. So great. that's, you know, that's just a really great, that's what you get when you hang out with other people that are like-minded, you get these great ideas that you that are right in front of your face, but you never put it together. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because at this point, with your mind still around, you finish the book and you launch the book and all that. Some authors that have done it two or three times, sure, they've they've already got those things down pat. Right, um, right. But it's it definitely the the whole book publishing process and what you need, what's included in that, is a really totally different thing than working as a coach. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a plus to have written a book. Um, actually, I was on the phone with a client yesterday and she asked me, why am I different from other coaches? And after I explained my credentials, I said, and I wrote a book. <laughs> and the irony of all of that was she was one of my reviewers. Oh, nice. she was a reviewer from Facebook that I put in an HR forum. I'm looking for reviewers mm -hmm. and she offered and she wrote a beautiful review. And then we sort of asked each other to connect. And when I connected with her, she wanted to become a client. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was a perfect, you know, setup when she was mm -hmm. asking me what makes you different, Mary, from everybody else. Well, I wrote a book, <laughs> which you reviewed. <laughs> right, right. So that was a huge plus, and she did become a client. So she just quit her job, which is interesting. But yeah, so Carolyn, do you have any questions you want to ask Yvonne while we have a captive audience here? <laughs> no, I was just curious about the process and how it really helped uh, your coaching business and it, or if it would help. Um, because, uh, you know, the, my struggles, I think is I've always been, um, networking in person. I was, you know, involved in chambers and BNI meetings in this past year. You know, I, I, I hate to say it. I don't think I'm very good at 
socializing via Zoom or LinkedIn. I mean, I try, I give it the best effort, but um, so I was hoping something might click that, and several people have mentioned, you know, Jill has said, why don't you write a book? And, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? But I never really thought about using my papers, you know, well, to, write, I, to since, include in a book. Like I said, since I got an A on every single paper, I said to my husband, damn it, this is a book. But at the time I was lost. So all I did was mush a bunch of them together put a yeah. fabricate a cover from the Amazon selection of covers and put it out there for 99 cents. And like I said, actually sold about five or maybe even 10 of them and got five stars reviews on that book. <laughs> yeah. So, so Caroline, what would you write about? What well, I'm, your... I have some similar to uh, background to Mary. I also work uh, with leadership uh, in women, but my take on it is not just totally the business side. I mean, I, I've had top leadership positions, but I like to incorporate finding balance in mm -hmm. one's life mm -hmm. uh, for all the primarily women, I would have to say out there, women who are, you know, just busy doing it all, have multiple priorities, whether they're at home or in the workplace, you know, um, so just helping them being productive and having a balanced life, I guess. So. That's well, that's a really good idea. That's um, a great topic. It is because so many, as I said, so many women today, um, I, it has exploded the amount of women who are starting new small businesses. And they, right now, I will tell you, I, I feel akin to these women. They are focused on the talent or whatever expertise they have and how they're gonna build this business to make up for the job that they decided not to go back to. None of them are yet looking at how it's going to impact their personal life. Mm -hmm. and yeah, a book like that would be great for them um, to understand how to do that and still be happy, sane and healthy. Yeah, right. So Yvonne, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, I, um, I'd love to have people stop at the website, which is nurturingbigideas.com. That's what I do. I like to nurture big ideas, but you can always email me at my, my email is my name, Yvonne, my first name, Y-V-O-N-N-E at Y-V-O-N-N-E-D-I-V-I-T-A. Dot com. And a um, little joke there, Mary. So Davida is my ex-husband's last name. <laughs> and um, people think I'm Italian. I am not, only by injection. And that's just a <laughs> joke there. But uh, people say, why did you keep your husband's name? Why did you? And when I said, well, I kept it in case I ever get arrested. <laughs> you know, his name goes in the paper, not mine. So... <laughs> Well, I'm Irish by injection, the same, same thing, <laughs> but I did not keep my ex-husband's name because my current husband, I don't think really wanted me to keep my ex-husband's name. <laughs> that would not have been good. And for a while I was doing hyphenated, but it was too long. It was just too yeah. long. It's O'Sullivan's like three or four syllables and like <laughs> well, I was already Davida when I met Tom, and it would have been hard to change my whole branding from right. Davida to Colin. I didn't but. have branding. I was, well, my branding was my reputation in my business yeah. world. People yeah. knew me by that name, but mostly I was my ex husband's name as a school teacher. So everybody that knows me as a school teacher, I have to put his name in parentheses in case they find me on LinkedIn and they want to know who's this Mary O'Sullivan. So I have my ex-husband's name up there as well and my maiden name. So, well, this was great, Yvonne and Carolyn. Thank you for hanging in. I'm so <laughs> grateful that you hung in there. And- uh, No um, problem, it was interesting. Thank you very much for the time that well, you put into this. You're very welcome. and. Um, you know, I can get you Yvonne's, I know you didn't have a chance to write it down. I can get you her no, info. <laughs> okay, that's no. great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank you, Mary. 
<laughs> Bye, everybody. You can Bye. hang on, Yvonne, if you want. That was great. I'm going to shut the recording off. <laughs>